You know, a lot of people don't appreciate zoning. And that's a shame considering what zoning meant to our ancestors. But zoning is everything. I know, that sounds dramatic, but think about where we were before zoning. Humans were fighting just to stay alive. If it had teeth or claws, we died to it. We were smart, yeah, but we were honest. And that meant being part of the food chain. Zoning changed that, and it put us on top permanently. Strength, size, speed, power. None of that matter anymore. Zoning done right meant incredible reward for practically no risk at all. My friend, to zone is to be human. But what does it mean to be a zoner? Well, it definitely involves everyone who shoots anything. But at the same time, that's not quite broad enough. Zoning is a game state much more than a character classification. Every character in the game is capable of, and greatly benefits from, a deep understanding of how to zone. At its core, zoning is timing and spacing. I've identified what I believe to be the five most important tips to make your zoning as strong as possible. So, let's take a step back and think like zoners. You are defeated! Instead of shooting where I was, you should have shot at where I was going to be! <laughs> One of the strongest tools in a zoner's arsenal is the ability to be winning the game without actually doing damage. We achieve this by using pressure to control space. A common mistake you'll see in players new to a character is strictly thinking of their attacks as a means of doing damage. And yes, that part is very important, but it alone will not be winning you any games. Consider Banjo. More specifically, let's take a look at Egg. Egg is, on paper, a pretty worthless move. It has very low knockback, barely does any damage, and it doesn't seem to lead to any combos. So, what was Sakurai thinking? This is a bad move, why would anybody ever push this button? Well, look at how much space Egg controls. Before anything happens, Ganondorf here is in a position where he can use every single one of his tools. One Egg, and we own that platform over him. Every option he had out of jump is gone, because we pushed B. Another shot on the ground, and suddenly he can't approach aggressively either. This doesn't look like it's that bad, but once you've been on the other end of its pressure, you'll know just how tedious it can be to fight against. Projectiles in particular are amazing for this, but any hitbox can be used to control space. There's a lot of recoveries that have very specific angles they need to go through, and if you just get in the way of that angle, you pick up a free stock. Small hits aren't flashy, but they are devastatingly effective. For a zoner, the game can be either won or lost based on the very first hit of the game. This is also the only moment of the game where we have time to actually plan ahead, and that's not an opportunity we can afford to waste. Keeping a percentage lead is central to our game plan, as otherwise our opponent has no reason to approach us. On the surface, this sounds like start every game by shooting a projectile, but remember, zoning is something everyone can use. Our goal here is to take the safest possible line to landing this hit. Of course, this varies wildly from matchup to matchup, but it boils down to only two main options. Go in aggressively, or wait passively. If your character is notably faster than your opponents, or if you have a projectile, odds are you're going to be making the first move. Your job is to figure out where your opponent is going to go, and then contest that space as safely as possible. Most characters are going to be trying to close the gap between you two, so aim to stop their forward momentum. Even if you've missed, you've succeeded in keeping their own first strike at bay. But you're not always lucky enough to be able to take the offensive, so many characters need to play more reactively. Be patient here, and be mobile. Wait for your opponent to commit to an attack, then switch to aggression of your own. 
As with the aggressive mindset, we want to be aiming to stop them moving closer to us. Getting too eager and swinging early can land you in a very poor situation. Imagine you've been fighting for a few minutes now. You're applying pressure, you're playing safe, and you're comfortably ahead. You figure, maybe far enough ahead that you can just go ahead and go try and fight. Hmm, uh, did you see the issue there? When something's working, don't get in the way of that. Yes, you can go in and try for that risky combo starter, or you could hold back and keep building on your lead. This isn't to say that it's never the right option to go in, just that it needs to be carefully measured when we do. We aren't fighting the character on the screen here so much as we're fighting the person controlling them. They need to be anxious to hit us, and the only way that's going to happen is if they never get the chance to in the first place. Once they've committed to just a little bit too much aggression, that's our chance to strike. Take as much guaranteed damage as you can, but be careful not to overcommit. If you go too deep and find yourself in disadvantage state, well, um, bad things can happen. But, what if you're the one being zoned? Well, in this case, it's very important that you, um, hmm, uh, be playing a stronger zoning character. When you both want the same thing, it lends a hefty advantage to the person who's brought better tools. Now, you didn't hear it from me, but it may be possible to counter zoning. Hypothetically speaking, you'd want to always approach slowly, specifically walk. Dash animations are about as juicy of a target as you can possibly get to shoot at, so avoid presenting it entirely. There's also a rumor that most projectiles are actually very low priority, meaning just about any hitbox would completely destroy them. Now this one really turns my stomach, but some deviants believe it could be possible to catch and use item-based projectiles against their owner. Were that to be possible, you would need to know how to catch every single item in the game, and, once you've taken it, know how to keep control of it for as long as possible, either by re-grabbing it or weaving it into your own kit for a big boost to your pressure game. Oh no, this is bad. Somehow, by some freak accident, your opponent has navigated your iron curtain of zoning, and buddy, they have a lot of pent-up aggression, and they're eager to vent some of that fury on you. So what can we do here? You can't zone someone in the middle of their own combo, so are we just boned? Well, yeah, but only kinda. The first thing we need to do here is shut down that alarm in our brain. Panicked people make bad decisions, and people only panic when things aren't going according to plan. So, we plan to be in disadvantage. It's no secret that zoners are at their weakest at close range, which makes it all the more critical that you are comfortable being there. Here's the secret. Taking damage doesn't matter. There's a whole mess of characters in the game where if they touch you at all, they get to do whatever they want for the next few seconds. And that sucks, but the only thing that matters is making sure it doesn't end with you dropping the stock. Know your character's best way to get to safety, be that air dodging away, trading through their pressure with your own attack, or retreating off stage. It doesn't matter how you do it, just get back to neutral. Any exchange that does not take your life is a winning one in a zoner's eyes. Okay, so we're living, but now we have a healthy opponent with a huge amount of momentum to deal with. How can we run this back? Well, zoning is a pathway to many abilities that some consider to be unnatural. We call upon the arcane power of chip damage. It may not feel like much, but every time you sneak a hit in, even if it doesn't lead to anything, that adds up over time, and time is a zoner's biggest ally. The longer we can make the game drag out, the more weight this chip damage carries. So that's great, we've evened the playing field, but now there's a bigger problem. Chip damage takes a long time to kill, and you know that dropping your guard for an instant will probably cost you the game. So, don't. The only hits you must avoid are the lethal ones. Anything else becomes a window for us to trade hits. 
being at 130 or 200% is actually not very different in most matchups. Keeping cool and staying patient lets us draw as much power as we can from our chip damage. Sometimes, you don't take the stock until 200%, but who cares? If we play the game on our terms the entire time, then it's irrelevant how damaged you are. They won't get a chance to put you down. A word of caution. Playing the long game is not the same thing as trying to time your opponent out. It's true, we want to be defensive, but our goal is always to be fighting our opponent and building towards a kill. If your focus is on running away, you're missing out on critical damage and pressure. A game can go to timeout, but trying to force that from the start will cost you more games than it will win. Up until now, I've been talking about how to zone, but that isn't why we're here right now. This video is called How to Think Like a Zoner, and the first thing you need to do is accept that we are the bad guys. Not in a literal sense, but in that we are not playing the game the way most players would consider to be correct or fair. We are cheap. After all, we just pushed the B button. We didn't do any quarter circles. We didn't confirm into a spike. We just shot stuff. So, of course, people call it brain dead. But think about what that word means. They're saying that no matter how hard they tried, how far ahead they thought, nothing they did mattered. Zoning was so inherently strong that you yourself weren't even a factor. Anybody could have been behind the controller. Here's the thing. Zoning will very rarely land you on a highlight reel. Even sparing use of it is going to have you branded as a spammer. And if you can't avoid that, if people are going to balk at your play no matter how little you use it, then why wouldn't you lean into being the villain? Let's take a second for some honest introspection. You may have chosen your character from a love of their game, but it's not what kept you playing them. You're here listening to me because at some point in your life, you pushed the B button and it just worked. You're a zoner. It's in your blood as a human. So here's my closing advice. Your goal is not just to beat your opponent, but to break them. If they're gonna be salty regardless, let's go ahead and give them a good reason to be. Deep down, somewhere in the bottom of your heart, there's already a part of you that craves that reaction. You may put on a humble face when your opponent smashes their controller into the ground, but in my eyes, that is the most complete victory possible. You defeated them so thoroughly that they felt powerless to stop you. So next time someone cries out how bullshit it is that you won because all you did was spam, you reply with, um, yeah, because of course you did. Zoning is very powerful, but it is not invincible. They don't want to admit it, but the problem lies with their play. Yours, clearly, is doing something very right. And with that, my secrets have been laid bare. I hope you find good use for some of what I've had to talk about here, and I look forward to watching you make your friends die just a little bit inside. Until next time, guys, it's been Glyph Money.